Hello and welcome to the session friends. My name is Yogesh Kumar. In this session, we are going to discuss about Docker containers. So this session is going to be quick introduction and basic commands. To begin with Docker, first we need to understand what is Docker. So friends, uh, Docker is an open platform for developers and system engineers to build, ship and run distributed applications. Whether on wear matter, wear matter basically means physical machines or virtual machines or on the cloud. Please note Docker is not a Linux container technology like Xen or KVM. Docker provides an additional layer of abstraction and automation of operating system virtualization on Windows and Linux. I have listed a couple of advantages of uh, using Docker. First one is portability. In Docker system, an application and its pre-requests or dependencies can be bundled into a single image which is called uh, basically image and you can further create containers from that image. So it will be independent of host kernel and can be easily ported to different systems or different repositories. Second one, quick application deployment. As application and its dependencies can be bundled into single image, it makes quicks to deploy the application. Next thing is sharing. As uh, I just mentioned, we can share the image with the multiple remote repositories. That's again the best feature. Dockers are lightweight because Docker images are generally very small and they need very low compute capacity and storage. So they are lightweight. Easy maintenance. It's very quick and easy to maintain Docker images or containers. Another advantage is cost saving because Dockers are open source technology and don't have uh, any heavy compute requirement. So they are uh, basically not costly product. In case you are going with vendor support, let's say you are using Red Hat Docker technology, then you have to pay to Red Hat. But if you are using open source one, you can just take help from community. In session today, first we are going to discuss what are Docker terminologies, then Docker container and virtual machine comparison. After that, we are going to install Docker software on uh, one of our Red Hat or CentOS 7 machine. Then we are going to discuss Docker network uh, in brief. After that, we are going to download a Docker container or image from a repository. Basically, we are going to deploy a container. Then we are going to create our custom container and going to manage the tags and repositories. At the end, we will discuss basic Docker operations, like what are Docker states, how you can check Docker logs, how you can allocate resources to a Docker container. So begin with, uh, first we need to understand uh, what is the difference between Docker container and virtual machines. Friends, uh, Docker containers can be created and destroyed very quickly as compared to the virtual machines. And Docker containers are very lightweight if I compare with virtual machines. Being lightweight, we can deploy more containers on a physical or a virtual host at the same time and we can use them. Docker containers make use of resources very efficiently. In case of virtual machines, capacity is need to be reserved. If you remember, whenever we are creating a VMware virtual machine, for example, we are allocating two CPUs, four GB RAM, something we are reserving, right? But in case of Docker, that's not a constraint. So let's say again, uh, benefit of Docker. One of the drawback of uh, Docker, I don't consider is a drawback, but again, that's some of limitation. In case of virtual machines, they can be migrated online across different machines because they are running over the hypervisor layer. But in case of Docker, we need to stop the Docker container first before uh, performing the migration because there is no hypervisor layer. And this is the image which I taken from uh, Docker documentation to easily demonstrate how VM work, how Docker work. So infrastructure is your server that may be physical server or virtual server. On that you install your host operating system. 
After that, there is hypervisor layer. On that hypervisor layer, you create guest operating systems like here, here, here. And uh, on those guest operating systems, you install your application. So there is hypervisor layer in between. In case of Docker, infrastructure, host operating system and Docker engine. That is not a hypervisor, but that is a Docker uh, engine which manages the Docker containers. And after that, there is no need to install operating system because your guest operating system is used and your library and binaries are used by application. So that's the way Docker works. So you can see uh, there is no hypervisor layer and there are no guest operating system requirement. That's something Docker is uh, quick to deploy and easy to manage. Okay, let's discuss Docker terminologies. Uh, I have listed only three, but there are many, but in this session, I'm going to discuss about uh, these three. So I thought to uh, keep the documentation uh, limited. First thing, images. Images are template for the Docker containers. If you remember in VMware, we can create a template that becomes that becomes a source image kind of thing. So similar thing here, images are templates for the Docker containers. What is container? Container is a Docker entity which is created from Docker images and which runs the actual application. Docker daemon, the basic service running on the host which manages building and running container. So that's basically daemon which controls the Docker containers and images to install docker simply this is the pre request red hat or send to a 764 bit you can run it run it on ubuntu also basically it need a kernel 3.10.x that's a minimum requirement if you go this kernel you can run it whether you got fedora you got ubuntu you got kali linux so that's not a hard requirement to have rel or send to us. Basically, uh, my lab setup, I got sent to a seven machine. So I'm installing EPL repository from that. I'm installing Docker, then enabling the service. Then this is the way to check Docker version. And if you want detailed information, you can run Docker info. If you want to know what are the images available on internet or uh, remote repositories, you can uh, run command Docker search sent to us. Sent to us basically is the image name which I'm looking for. If you go to, uh, let's say you want to get BusyBox, you can replace send to us with BusyBox. You can say Docker search BusyBox. That's a way to search images. So that was something how you can install and start the Docker. After that, I have listed a couple of lab tasks. So I'm going to demonstrate this task practically, but here uh, that's a quick uh, introduction to get a image or basically to pull a image from uh, remote repositories you can run command docker pull your image name if you want to list what are the images locally on your system docker images to test your new image you can run like this to list all the containers docker ps minus a check docker networking docker network ls and uh, if you want to get detailed information about particular network you can run docker space network space inspect then your network name docker stat tells what is the resource consumption by a particular docker container if you want to set up limits let's say you want to limit your container can use up to this particular amount of cpu this particular amount of ram you can use a uh, run space it uh, t is basically uh, tty minus c is cpu 256 mean uh, because in docker how it works let's say you got uh, two cpus the two cpus will be counted as 1024 1024 when i say 256 it mean one fourth of the total compute capacities not compute capacity basically the cpu capacity i'm going to use one fourth if i say 512 it mean i'm going to use half of my cpu capacity so that's something you can manage minus m is uh, i'm allocating 300 mb memory this is my container name and uh, i'm running this particular command to log into container how to stop start restart docker start container id will start the container stop will stop restart will restart container if you have make some changes into your uh, container and you want to commit those changes you can run docker commit container id what it means this will turn the container into an image 
and after that you can tag that image using below command docker tag container id space repo and tag i will demonstrate this practically okay next thing how you can remove a container docker rm container id will remove the container how you can check the logs of container docker log container id sorry it's my mistake i have repeated this twice so ignore this one okay next thing uh, at the end we will create our own custom docker container this is the way like i am just creating one dummy directory i am equating uh, one parameter or basically this comment into my demo web page.txt file and after that i am using docker run minus d minus p is ports like uh, port on container side port on localhost minus minus name what is the name of this particular container minus v minus v stands for volume what volumes i want to map with container so i am saying these volumes because these are libraries uh, binaries and libraries minus w stands for working string basically work dir in which directory need to work as i have stored my this particular text file in vad ww html so i am saying this is my working directory minus v again because i want to share this one with my container i am saying minus v this directory and this is my container the image which i am going to use after that i am running python minus m minus m stands so module i am saying use simple http server module this is python module and on which port it need to run port 8080 you can use choose any custom port that's up to you and uh, once you press enter then you can check whether this port is now is listening so you can run netstat minus t upln pipe trap 8080 to test your website simply run curl localhost this particular port and your demo page and if you get this particular message like this is my docker website then it means your website is running so that's it uh, so let's begin our technical session friends where i can demonstrate all the things to you okay friends uh, this is my centos 7 machine I'll quickly show you the configuration which i have done so this is centos 7.2 and my kernel is 3.10 which i told like that that is the base requirement okay now let me show you the couple of things i have disabled firewall d your system CTL. okay if you see the service uh, is disabled and i'm not using network manager at all and let me show you my sc linux status it's enabled let me quickly disable it this is demo so i'm not too much worried about sc linux but uh, i'm going to disable it disabled and let me quickly uh, disable it on runtime so i have disabled if you see it is saying uh, mode from config file it is disabled so let me quickly reboot so it will not uh, give any issue when we are doing configuration rebooting my system so i'm just pausing this video for a couple of seconds uh, till the time my centos systems comes back up okay friends uh, my system came back now uh, I just check that this status. It is disabled now. That's good. So let's continue with EPL repository installation first. As I mentioned, I'm going to get this package from EPL repository. Yum install minus y is for yes, and uh, EPL release it will install EPL repository here. So it looks good. EPL repository got installed. I am installing Docker now. So Docker package name is Docker. Okay, so these are dependencies. Let's go pick depends dependency list. So I believe it may take a couple of uh, seconds, but speed is good. I'm getting good speed from uh, my internet provider today. That's a great thing. So the Docker installation completed. If you see, this is Docker 64-bit. These were the dependencies. This package got updated. 
So next thing we have to enable Docker service, system CTL enable Docker. If you see symbolically created and service enabled, let's start the service now. Just getting started, I believe. Okay, let's check exit code of command to confirm. Or uh, other thing you can do is just um, CTL status Docker. You see service is running and is enabled, so that's good. And uh, now, if you have to check Docker version quickly, how you can do that? Docker space version. So this tell this is Docker version 1.12.5 of Docker client and Docker server is 1.12.5. So both are on same version. That's good. And uh, if you want to get detailed information about your Docker installation, you can run Docker info. This tells how many containers you have, how many are running, how many post, how many stopped. How many images you got and docker server version the storage driver and how much data it has consumed what is the logging configured and what is this your system architecture like this particular host where you have installed docker how much memory it got what is the system name my system name is docker management so this is the information you can get with a docker and next thing trends are how you can check the available images using docker so simply you can run let me clear screen docker search and the image which you are looking for i'm looking for centos so let me type centos if you see these are the images available from centos and these are from docker.io and let's say i want to check busy box what are the busy box images available so i can write it checks okay these are the images available and what you have to basically see this is the official image the first one and it got 936 stars which is uh, basically a reliable one if i have to download something i will go with official one and similar for sent to s1 uh, if you see this particular first image was official one otherwise some custom someone uploaded for public again depend upon your requirement you can choose uh, the image you want to use let me check any sent to s7 image I'm minimizing it. Okay, with send to S7, these images are available. With Densible, no one is official. But uh, I'm going to download one image, uh, send to S slash send to S7 one. I'm going to download. To download a Docker image, basically, we have to call pull operation of Docker, Docker pull. Send to S colon send to S seven. So this will pull image from uh, remote repositories to your local system where you have installed Docker. So this is the image size seventy MB and it is getting downloaded now. So still download in progress. I believe it will finish in couple of seconds. Now extraction is in progress. So I believe it's about to finish now. Okay, so this is the checksum. SHA-256. Okay, so our image is downloaded. Next thing, if we have to check, what are the images available? So you can uh, run docker space images. If you see only one image is available, this was downloaded from this particular repository. This is the tag. This is the image ID. And it was created 10 weeks ago. This is the installed size. When it got downloaded, it was 70 MB, but it got extracted and this is the new size. Okay, so next thing, uh, let's test whether the image we downloaded is working or not. To do that, you can run Docker space run run mean you are going to run that particular image so this is the image name you see centos and this is the tag and you are going to run slash bin slash ping basically inside that image we are going to run ping command ping this opera.com website minus is count five times pressing enter if you see we are getting response and this communication is happening within that container now let me run 
one command quickly. Let me run uname minus a. So this command is going to execute inside the container. Okay, it got error. It is saying file not found. Oh, sorry, my mistake. Uh, it need to be uname. Okay, if you see, this is the container ID. This is the particular kernel it is using, which is of uh, Docker host where container is installed. So that's the way Docker works because this command is getting executed. Let me show you uname minus a of my system where I install kernel. The name is Docker management, but this particular one got uh, the Docker ID docker uh, container thing okay next thing uh, how you can list out containers and uh, the configuration so you can run docker space ps space minus a if you see these are the docker images let me read in command uh, by reducing the font size okay so this is the container id this is the image, this is the command which we run, and uh, this is the status. So that's a way you can list out uh, what you have done inside the container. Next thing uh, about Docker networking. Let me quickly show you one another thing. I'm going to repeat one another command. If config minus a, this command is, uh, this command will run uh, inside the container. giving error it is saying docker is paused so let me check what happened basically docker process is not running due to some reason uh, i will come to this point in a couple of seconds let me quickly show you how docker network work to list out docker network let me show you my physical system network configuration it got uh, this was the ethernet zero which is default nic card this is loopback and when i installed docker it created uh, one nic which is basically bridge name is docker zero this is the ip on my physical system and let me show how docker networking works so if you see there are uh, three one is host this is my host's physical nick this is the bridge bridge is this docker zero this is the network id and if you want to get detail about this particular uh, network how you can do that docker network inspect and network name so network name let's say i want to check about this bridge what is the configuration it is telling me this is the bridge it got this particular range 172.17.00 slash 16 and you can customize it depending upon your requirement you can create a new network you can attach a network to a running container you can detach a network so there are multiple things i'm not going into that much detail but uh, these things are possible okay so now let's run a container with the uh, resource limitations because by default docker can consume whatever resource on your physical system if you want to allocate uh, resources to your uh, docker container how you can do that for that basically we have to run docker run run mean we are running a docker minus it mean uh, with the terminal minus c mean compute resources which i discussed in theoretical session minus m memory this is the my docker container i'm running bash okay this command finished so let me quickly show you one thing if you see this particular thing the shell is changed now i am inside the docker container i am not on my physical system i am inside docker system let me run df minus h if you see this is the df minus h output which uh, is inside the container and let me run if config command now i believe it will give error because uh, the command it is picking from uh, global zone that's fine now uh, let me show you even this command will be not there let me confirm. the reason because i have not exported these particular parts that's a reason uh, but that's not an issue So this is the docker we are inside docker so that's a way you can reserve resources and let me open one uh, another session quickly where i can show you how resource allocation works
to check resource allocation you can run command uh, docker stats so this command checks how many resources are used this is a particular container id which is running if you remember here i'm running this container and the limit is 300 mb if you remember when running this container i set the limit to 300 mb so that is the limit this is a total memory this is a memory usage as of now 4 mb and limit is 300 mb and this is a network io this is the block io and these are the processes right now no process running pid is zero that's a way you can check the resource utilization of a container i am pressing control c here to exit to simply type exit now you are on your management node and let's run couple of operations here docker ps minus a these are the docker images running and let's restart a image how you can restart a image or sorry i'm repeating correcting myself i'm going to stop a docker container docker stop container id so it stopped to start it docker start if you want to restart it just type restart so in that way docker container will get restarted still in progress let's wait it to finish okay it finished it got restarted so that's a way you can uh, restart stop start a container let me list the images Docker images. okay right now i got only one image let's say i want to create my own image from a running container right now if you remember this container is running this particular container id if you i want to customize it let's say i have updated something in this container and i want to create an image now how i can do that docker commit and container id once you do that uh, this is finished now let's run docker images command again if you see one new image id is created earlier it was not there and it created five seconds ago so that's the way you can create your image but one thing you may be wondering why repository is none tag is none basically we can tag it and set a repository to do so we have to run docker tag command and uh, that can be done with docker tags sorry tag image id and uh let me make repository here i have to specify repository i'm saying this is you test image and colon i have to put tag i'm saying this is demo image so let me run docker images if you see now here uh, this particular image got tag you test image and uh, this is the image id and it got this particular tag so that's a way you can create uh, a docker image and you can export this image to any repository or uh, you can make a tab bar so there are multiple ways how you can remove or uh, delete a container for that uh, let's say this is our container id and i want to remove it so docker rm and container id press enter here i'm getting error you cannot remove a running container okay because this container is in running state so i have to stop it otherwise i can use minus f let me use minus f if minus f mean force which forcefully i have uh, deleted the container otherwise i can stop it first then start the container so that's a way you can destroy or remove a container okay let's check the containers again okay so this is the container which we got currently it is created and uh, let me run this container to run a container basically i have to specify its uh, container name and uh, I have checked my status it is running now 
and uh, let's quickly do one test i'm again uh, going to run container command to ping opera.com okay it is able to ping and let's say friends uh, you have to check logs of uh, your container how you can do that docker space logs space your container id this is my container id now right now there are no logs available for this container let me run uh, docker ps minus a okay let's check for uh, this one because this was a container under which uh, i run this ping command that's the reason i have to specify this ping id uh, sorry this container id and i am sure it will re revert something okay if you see from logs i got i have pinged this particular thing so in that way you can check logs of your container these are not uh, complete log but again uh, you can get something so the way i did okay let's do one thing let's create our custom website using docker containers how we can do that i will quickly demonstrate you let me clear my screen we already got one container image which is sent to a seven and i'm going to use python module name simple http server and going to run one website on port 8080 okay first thing i have to do i have to create a directory on my server let me show you i haven't got uh, apache web server if you see i don't have apache but i'm going to run a web server using python's simple http server module so i'm creating a directory with var www.html i am going to echo some string in a demo web page.txt file this is my this is your case test docker website that seems good okay so i got this particular text inside this file next thing friends uh, i have to run a docker here i'm saying docker run minus d minus p mean port 8080 8080 uh, what why i have specified port two times which port need to be used inside container and on the physical host site so that's i'm saying use same port after that uh, i'm giving a name python web and minus v means uh, i am saying this is my volume volume in the volume which need to be exported to container i'm saying user has been need to be exported as user has been minus v user bin need to be exported from physical system or uh, the docker the system where i installed docker and on docker container it need to be user bin so that's a way like uh, that's a formatting after that i'm saying uh, user lib64 also need to be exported from a uh, physical system to the container as user lib64 then another directory i need uh, i have to tell this is my working directory working mean uh, where i got my configuration file this particular one i'm saying minus w this particular directory then i'm saying export this particular path because my container cannot access this path if i am not exporting it so i'm saying export this path also and which particular container to use i'm saying use centos one which i have just downloaded before the start during the start of the session then i'm saying which command to run i'm saying uh, run python command okay if you are running this demo you need to have python installed i forgot to tell that but uh, i thought to tell you now and which python module to use i am saying minus m simple http server on which port 8080 pressing enter it is saying uh, unable to find image latest okay something missing in my command let me quickly have a look okay so i go to error here friends uh, i have missed uh, minus which is uh, the reason the command is getting failed here it's a good thing we are getting error so let's try okay if you see this time command finished and uh, let's check whether on uh, my physical machine it is listing or listening on uh, port 8080 because i just started the server on port 8080 
okay if you see it is listening and uh, this is docker proxy okay let's test our website so i'm going to use curl localhost on port 8080 and this this particular web page if you see i got my message it means my website is working so that's a quick way friends how you can create uh, your own website and uh, let me do one another thing quickly okay so this is the container id where i run this python web server right this is the container id so let me commit it This container ID so it is committed let me tag it now because tagging is again important friends so I'm going to tag now Joker tag this particular container ID basically this is now image so I have to specify image let me check what is the image ID Joker images. I'm repeating uh, I know you might be getting confused when I committed it I committed with container ID but uh, once commit is complete it turns that particular co container into image container will be still running but again uh, the image gets created if you see this image get got created 27 seconds ago and uh, now I have to tag this particular image so docker tag this image I'm saying uh, this is Yogesh repository and this is a uh, Python web and I'm saying uh, here need to be slash because uh, that's a format and I'm saying this is my lab Python web server okay image got created tagged if you see this is the information now this is python web and this is my tag so it means image is created that's a way like you can create uh, your own uh, docker images so that's it uh, in this session friends uh, if you have any query any suggestion or uh, any feedback please leave a comment on my youtube channel and this session i know that is not a very advanced session this is only for basics like you if you guys are not aware what is docker how images work how to run docker how to run containers how to create images how to check resource utilization so these are the things which we just discussed so basically you have to learn uh, more things about docker whatever i discussed that's very basic but this can be a base for uh, your next learnings of Docker. Thanks for watching this video friends.